What's up YouTube, TCM here, back with another video. Now, recently we released an IoT hacking course. And this course is pretty cool. I have been looking for a course like this for a while. And it goes into so much detail. It talks about electrical engineering and it talks about getting hands on and actually getting into the device and looking at the firmware, the hardware, everything in between and how you actually hack this stuff. It's really, really cool. So with that in mind, I started digging into this course as well. If you do know my struggles from before, I have been looking for great IoT hacking material for quite some time. I registered for a course that won't be named that was $3,000 plus dollars and was really, really, really bad. So for this course to come across the Academy, it's awesome for me because I get to learn along with all of you. And I've been learning lately a lot about firmware analysis, thanks to this course and Andrew, the author. And so I wanted to dig into a little firmware analysis today. We're going to look at some manual firmware analysis, and we're going to look at some automated firmware analysis, including some zero day hunting, which is really, really cool. So let's not waste any more time. We're going to dive right in and start looking at this analysis. So today we're going to be utilizing a known vulnerable firmware called IoT Go. This was actually created by the OWASP project, which is pretty cool. If you just go to Google and search IoT Go, you can come here and actually find this. So I'm going to click into it. And if we look at what it is, it is an open WRT project that was made intentionally vulnerable. You can actually come look through here. They have all the challenges that are available to you. So if you like click on the challenges, you can come through here and see, hey, what challenges are available for me to find? And there's quite a bit. Pretty nice because a lot of IoT and hardware hacking requires physical hardware. And this is allowing us to simulate a lot of what exists on the physical hardware without actually having to buy any devices. It does give a lot of information here about the OWASP top 10 for IoT, which is really nice. Talks about how to get started. And for us today, all we're going to do is just come in here and go to releases. And I'm going to be using Kali 2023.2 in order to actually work on this project. So here I'm going to download this IoT Go Raspberry Pi 2 image, and we're going to extract this. Okay, so I placed this file on my Kali Linux machine. You can see I have this image here, and we need to extract this firmware image in order to get a bin file. That bin file is going to allow us to actually view what is inside of this image. So let's work through how we're going to actually do that. We can utilize a tool called Binwalk. So if we just say Binwalk and we come in here and just point to this image, it will spit out a bunch of information at us. And some of that information is valuable. Really, it's going to be the last line for us. So as we go through and it spits this out, we're going to be looking for this squash FS file system here. And we also need to know the address that it lives at. So this 293-60128. And so with this information, we can actually extract this. So we can utilize a tool called DD, which is the disk or data duplicator. And in order to do that, we can come in here and just say DD. We can point to our IoT image here. And then we can give this a byte size of one. We can put our skip address in here, which is going to be this address right here. So that's just going to be a 293-60128. And then we can give this an output file. So we'll just call this iotgo.bin. Remember, we want this bin here. So let's go ahead and run that. And then once that runs, we should get a bin file. So if we ls in here, we can see now we have this iotgo.bin. Perfect. All right, so now all we need to do is come in here and run sudo unsquash fs like that, and then just give it this iot file with our bin. Once we have that, we can hit enter, type in our password, and we should get 100% of blocks written here. What happens is this actually gets spit out. So if we do an ls now, we can see we have the squash fs dash root. We can cd into this, and guess what? We can actually see the file system here of this firmware. So we have different locations here. For example, we have a dev folder. That could be interesting. We've got a www folder. We've got an Etsy folder, a root folder. So a lot of things are going on here. For example, if we wanted to do some manual analysis on this, we can come through and just look at the Etsy folder. So if we CD into Etsy and we CD into the right Etsy, not the actual Etsy folder, then we can come in here in LS and we can see that we have a few things in here. For example, we have a shadow backup file. Interesting. We also have a shadow file in here. 
that's nice. So we can come in and just enumerate this. Like if we wanted to cat out the shadow file, we totally could. And we can do that. We could see, hey, we've got a shadow file here with this password. We have an IoT goat user as well. We have that backup file. So if we just ended up catting out shadow.back, we could see that information as well. And it looks like this hash might be different than the one that we're seeing up here. So we might have two different passwords available to us. So if we wanted to analyze this firmware manually, we could dig through a lot of this file system and look for hidden secrets, passwords, things like that, that may cause vulnerabilities in this firmware. And yeah, that's cool, right? This is pretty neat that we can dig into things like this. But what if I told you that there was an automated way to actually look at some of this firmware and find zero days, find vulnerabilities within your firmware, all of that within minutes. And that actually brings us to today's sponsor, which is BugProof. Now, BugProof is designed specifically for the Internet of Things or IoT, and they have all kinds of pricing tiers, including free tier pricing. Now, what we're going to look at today is going to be the enterprise pricing. And this is great if you're a manufacturer or if you're working on some projects, you're running multiple projects in security labs, they do have team pricing, but they have this free pricing as well, which is really, really nice. So if you're a bug bounty hunter or researcher, you just want to see if there's any vulnerabilities within firmware, you do get three free scans a month. I think that's really, really awesome. And you get 30 zero day analysis a month. Really, really neat as well. You can come in here and check all of this out in terms of what the differences are. They just added a lot of new features that are available. And what's really cool is I'm going to be on an enterprise plan, but everything I'm going to show you in this video, with the exception of these PDF report exports, is included in the free plan. So everything that you see today, with the exception of these PDF reports, you can do and follow along with me, which is really cool. And honestly, this is great for multi-use. Again, if you're a bug bounty hunter, this is free and can help you analyze bugs and firmware. A lot of bug bounty hunters are looking at web applications or maybe looking at mobile applications, but how many are actually looking at IoT devices and hacking those? This could be an opportunity for some really quick wins for you through automated analysis. So let's actually check this out and see what BugProof can do. Okay, so the first time you sign into BugProof, your screen's gonna look very similar to this. All we have to do is upload a bin file. Remember, we already extracted a bin file from our firmware. So now we have this and we can come in here and say, hey, yeah, I want to scan this. It says, yes, this is a firmware image. We can come in here and have some advanced options as well. But honestly, if you just want to come in here and do automated scanning with the default, everything you can. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say, let's roll here. And it's going to take just a couple of minutes to actually go through all the vulnerabilities. You're going to see it scan here and it's going to just go through everything and look for known vulnerabilities, known CVEs. It's going to go out there and look for zero day vulnerabilities as well. It looks through a lot of things and we're going to cover all of that here in just a second. So I'm going to pause here and let this finish. You can see we're already at 50% by the way, but we'll come back as soon as the scan's done and we'll take a look at what this has to offer. Okay, our scan finished. It took literally about 30 seconds to finish this. And it talks about on this front page, an overview. We see, okay, we have up to 73 vulnerabilities here that it found. We can see that the maximum security level is critical, so it did find some critical bugs for us. It shows us the breakdown automatically on this page, which is really, really cool. And it even comes through here and shows you, hey, what are the CWE types that it found the most of? So use after free is the common one here. We see observable discrepancies. We've got improper authentication. Nice. You can come in here and look at the unsafe function calls that are written in this code. And there are a lot of them. All right. A lot of them, which is awesome. And we can see different hardening measures here as well. So this is just a nice overview. It talks through what scripting languages you can see. We see mostly shell. It looks like there's one Lua file in here. And if we wanted to dive into the findings, we can come over here on the left hand side and look at our findings here. We have the ability here to actually upload and compare these findings with the previous scan. So if you're working in an enterprise environment, you can come here and say, okay, well, I scanned this a few days ago. I ran updates and now I want to see if those updates have been fixed, what's left to fix. And so you can do comparisons, which are nice. And then in here, it does sort it by critical vulnerabilities, which is pretty nice. We can come in here and look at the vulnerabilities that are known. So for example, the first one is a WPA supplicant vulnerability here. And we can see when it was published, this is from 2022, and you can read about the details here. You can get an explanation of this, and that's really, really nice as well. 
And so you can come and look at, hey, what are the dependencies affected? What's the category? Where are the references? And then you can look at this and understand how to actually fix this issue, which is great. So it does come in here and do automated vulnerability scanning for IoT devices, which is fantastic, right? On top of that, we can come over here and it does zero day scans. Now, this is one of the coolest features, I think, of this whole platform. It comes in here and picks out automatically the binaries that it thinks has the potential to have the most vulnerabilities and it scans those automatically like this k mod loader here you can click into this and it'll tell you details on what it is finding so for example it thinks it found a buffer overflow vulnerability here it's showing you the decompiled source code and then it will even explain this to you with ai right and it'll say hey here's what the code is why it's vulnerable and how to fix it isn't that neat? Really, really cool, especially if you're developing these things. But if you're a hacker like me, really cool as well, because you can find bugs and flaws and possibly zero days in firmware. You can come through here and look at the disassembly as well, which is really nice. You can close this out if you need to. And you can come back into this, by the way, and you can run this on other binaries. It just tries this on the binaries that it thinks is the most vulnerable. But if you come through here, you can look at weak binaries and actually start scanning. So, hey, look, it picked all these out, right? And it says show scan. We can come in here and run this against all the binaries it finds. So if I want to run a scan against this, I can run it right here. And this will run automatically. It'll take a little bit of time to scan this because it is doing this analysis on the fly. But it will spit back out once it's done and let us know very 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 cool all right so we can come through here we can also look at dependencies and we can see all the dependencies that are in this application so we can come through here and dig for vulnerable dependencies like this dns mask here we can click through the different vulnerabilities that exist within this dns mask and again we can just evaluate all this look at all the references look at the categories it's so laid out just easy to use and access and it's fantastic I don't know very much about IoT hacking. Again, I'm a noob at this, but this allows you so easily to come in here and just understand this. It makes it simple for people like me that maybe are just getting into IoT hacking. It also has this section here for cryptography. We don't have any cryptographic artifacts in our code here, but what it does do is it'll go out here and look for cryptographic materials and assess them for their strengths, security, best practices, everything else. So this is a nice section here. We also had a couple of areas just recently added. For example, we have File Explorer now, which if you click on that, we can come in here and actually look at all the files that are in here. So you saw how we had to do that squash FS, do it all manually. Well, we can come in here now and just dig around through the files. We can download the entire archive if we want. You can see how many executables are in here, how many total files. And again, remember, we went to Etsy. We were able to find information within Etsy about the shadow file and the backup, and that exists right here. So we do have the ability to come in here and manually look through all the file system as well without having to do all the crazy stuff we did before and use a command line, all that. We can just dig through it just in this application. We also have the ability to come in here and look at reports and generate reports. So let's say I want to generate a report on this. I just click generate report and it does it for me. All right, and it takes just a few seconds for that to generate. So if we go ahead and open this report up, it gives us a nice report here. It says, hey, here's the firmware analysis report. We've got 12 pages. It automatically gives us a table of contents that's clickable, by the way. And it gives us all kinds of information here. Look, it gives a disclaimer, okay. We get an overview, scope, methodology. Uh, we've got our findings graph. This is like a real report that you would submit for a client or something like that as well. So depending on the usage of this, if you're using this as a team or as a consultancy, it's very, very great as well. You can come through here and look at the different dependencies like we saw before. It'll talk about the vulnerabilities that exist within each of these dependencies. And it's just awesome. Like, what does this? This does this so fast. It's crazy. All right, we've reached the end of our video. Please go check out Bugproof. It's really, really awesome. I'll link it in the description below. It has enterprise plans. It has team plans. It has a free plan. It's great for all uses. If you're a bug bounty hunter, awesome. If you're developing IoT devices, awesome. If you're a hacker like me and you're on a team and you hack a lot of IoT devices, hey, even great. They have that team plan for you as well. So go check out this automated firmware analysis. Possibly find some CVEs, some zero days, get some money for bugs. Find bugs in your code, all that fun stuff.
Until next time, my name is Heath Adams, aka The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.